This video will cover data entry, or researchers entering data directly into REDCap. Let's start by adding new records to a pre-existing project. To add a new record, go to Add slash Edit Records under Data Collection. Here, you can choose an existing record or add a new record. This will take you to the Record Home page. Note that you can see all the data collection instruments you have for the project and their statuses. Right now, all the statuses are gray because no data has been entered. Click on the status icon to go to the first instrument. Type to enter the information in a text field. The next field to complete is a pre-validated date, set up in day-month-year format. Make sure to match all data in the specified format as you enter it. An error pop-up will appear if the format is incorrect. We validated this age field to accept integers within a certain range. If you enter a word instead of a number, a pop-up will appear. If you enter an out-of-range number, such as 300, a pop-up will appear with a suggested range for the age, in this case, between 18 and 80. There are three types of multiple choice questions, a basic multiple choice option with all answers visible on the screen, a drop-down menu option, and a checkbox option. Checkboxes allow you to pick more than one answer choice in the multiple choice question. You can also create multiple choice questions with branching logic, which is called conditional branching. Branching logic sends respondents down different paths in a survey, depending on how they respond to specific questions. In this example about library databases, depending on how you answer the question, you will get a different follow-up question on how much you use the specific database chosen. Note that the follow-up question contains a slider field to drag and drop. Slider fields are great in test-retest situations. Participants are less likely to remember where they drop the slider than how they answer the multiple choice question. Here, you can see a descriptive field displaying a picture online in the data collection form. This yes-no question also has branching logic attached to it. If I answer no, nothing happens. If I answer yes, then a new field appears, prompting me to upload a photo of my mole. Next, we have the e-signature field. This allows for whoever is filling out the form to add their own signature that will be stored with the record. At the bottom, you can mark the form as incomplete, unverified, or complete. Unverified is useful if you have multiple researchers double-checking the entered data. REDCap gives a few different save options. Save an exit form, which will go back to the record home page, save and stay on this form, or save and go to next form. On the next form, we have an example of matrices. Matrices are a group of multiple choice questions that all use the same answer choices. These are useful if you use a Likert scale or anything where you want all the answer choices at the top. Fill in these number fields, and now you could see the calculated field that is adding up the answer for how many hours a week do you spend on schoolwork. Although this displays on the screen, it won't be saved until you hit the Save button. So let's mark the form as complete, and then save and go to the next form. The next form is a little bit different from the other two. It can repeat, which allows you to enter information more than once without overriding the existing data. For example, enter in information, and there is a new option under Save. Save and add new instance. This creates a second copy of the form. It says Instance 2 at the top where I can enter new information for a second doctor's visit. 
I'm going to mark this as unverified. And the system has memorized my save option, save and add a new instance. And I can enter a third answer. Let's leave this incomplete and save and exit the form. The first two instruments are marked green on the record homepage for complete. And the personal doctor's instrument shows multiple statuses. The blue means that the statuses are mixed. Under repeating instruments, all three instances of personal doctors show different statuses, red for incomplete and yellow for unverified. Data history and field comments are additional fields in data entry forms. To review data history, find the field you're interested in within a data entry form. Then select the circled H next to it. This page contains all the information entered into the field, who entered it, when they entered it, and exactly what they put. Data history is a great way to backtrack if you make a mistake in your data entry process. Field comments are the speech bubbles below the H. In this area, someone can enter specific information about the field, making it a great way to communicate, especially if the people doing data entry and the project manager rarely work at the same time. For example, this doctor's first name is Mickey, but I'm unsure if it's a typo for Minnie. I can save my question as a field comment, and another person can review the log page to see and address the comment. Finally, the Record Status Dashboard has a list of all the records in the project. You can see each form status for each record, incomplete, unverified, or complete. And if any of these have information in personal doctors, you can see the mixed statuses. To add a new instance, click on the Add button. Otherwise, go to the form for that record by clicking on the dot associated with it. If you are interested in more advanced design features, please check out Supplementary Video B, which goes over branching logic, piping, matrix fields, action tags, and repeating instruments.